Okay. Welcome back to the match. Is my overlay not working? Well, uh, we are back. The overlay is not. It was <laughs> a very nice schedule, though. <laughs> my, you're working, but I'm not working. That's interesting. One sec. Well, okay, there we go. All right, now we're good. You can actually see me talking. That's all I asked was just to make sure that my uh, my voice thing was working. Um, and so we are back. We're going to get going now with uh, our second match of the night. It's SoCal versus Georgia. Another loser's bracket extravaganza between uh, a team that surprised in a kind of negative way last week and a team that surprised in a very positive way last week. Um, Georgia looked unreal in both of their matches in the loser's bracket last week, and SoCal looked a little off their game in their winner's bracket match against, uh, against Washington. So this should be, uh, an interesting, an interesting it match. Should. Yeah, and you're talking about unexpected performances, Georgia swept both of those loser's bracket brackets, whereas SoCal ended up dropping 6-1, to one, something I don't think anybody expected, but... SoCal obviously is still a very strong team that I'm sure a lot of people still expect to go far in this tournament. So uh, Georgia can have a little bit tougher of a match than of their previous two matches. Uh, of course, some very strong players on that SoCal team, Matthew Utami, uh, Eric Kuhn headstack. They just have so much depth to that roster. And so going to look to have a better performance than last week here. Georgia, though... Certainly some strong players have not been keeping up with their matches. Who do you think are the strong players on Georgia this week? Uh, I, you know, I feel like it depends on what kind of map they pick, but the big three are Sakajo, Razorfruit, and Remiko um, over, their, over their previous couple of matches. I think those guys were the ones that looked absolutely nuts. Um, I have to double check the, the match cost because I don't remember offhand, but in the match against Pennsylvania, uh, Remiko put up the most absurd match cost that I've seen like in this entire tournament. I know, um, you know, they won that 6-0, so it's not the most representative sample. Uh, but Remiko out out match costed everyone by like 0.8, and he top scored all six maps. So uh, definitely a player to watch out for to see what his skill cap ends up looking like um, as we you know move on to a pool that's a little bit more difficult than that semifinals pool was. Yeah, definitely. And I do, speaking of pool being a little bit more difficult, I do have to feel like these SoCal players are going to scale a little bit better, typically, than the Georgia players, but pool shouldn't be anything crazy. Yeah, I think, you know, Utami being Utami is like the single best scaling player in the tournament, right? He is the skill cap representative, um, but... If you see players putting up the performances, the level that Georgia did last week on kind of a variety of skill sets where they had people doing well on DT1, they had people doing well on Free Mod 2, they had people doing well on Nomad 5, like all over the place. If you look at the, the match that they played against Pennsylvania, they played so many different kinds of maps and they did well, especially Remiko, on all of them. I think that's something to watch out for if SoCal has trouble with their depth players like they did last week, those kind of, you know, the rotation guys, as you would call them uh, in, in basketball, if they still have trouble, then Georgia has a roster that can definitely put some uh, fear into them. Oh, I... They certainly do. And we did see Georgia even top scoring the Nomad 4 last week. So uh, as well as both the HR1 and the HR2 and I feel like the HRs are something we haven't seen SoCal look to pick or play very often. And so I do think those hard rocks are going to be potentially a strong point for Georgia here. Whereas SoCal might be looking towards those DTs and those free mods, but 
I mean, Georgia performed well on those too, getting top two scores on both DT1, DT3, and DT4. They've just looked so good lately on everything, and so SoCal might have a bit of a tough time finding a lot of picks to go into Georgia here. Yeah, I think, you know, historically, traditionally, you would make the argument for SoCal being a really good state mechanic-wise. Like, they're going to do well on the ones and the, you know, and the twos and stuff, whereas Georgia has, in the past, been very strong on kind of gimmickier stuff because they have specialists for... Oh, what's going on here? My client. They have specialists for, like, easy and flashlight and things like that. Oh, it actually is this version of this song. You know, this is... I, I scroll down my uh, Osu Direct every time I open the game, and I just get to this one, and I'm like, okay, I'm not downloading this every single time because this version of this song is so bad. Um, and so we're going to turn this down. We're going to turn this down a lot. Um, but yeah, I think... This year, though, Georgia has looked good on everything, like we said. So, this is, a, this is you know, kind of like the, the last match, I think, going to be very interesting to see what the teams ban and pick. Yeah, and kind of uh, interesting, but it seems like the only time Georgia has lost a map was in the match they lost uh, against Cal Carolina, sorry. In their other three matches, they have not dropped a single point, so... I don't expect that to be the performance today, but have been looking very good overall, and I think we should just have one more warm-up to go here. Yeah, we're just waiting on the SoCal warm-up here. Oh, wait, it changed? Oh. Or is that just how this song goes? Did the, uh, hopefully the it doesn't audio... look like it's changed, yeah. Hopefully, uh, hopefully you should have audio now as well. Uh, I do not. Oh my god, okay. Alright, well. <laughs> I love OBS. Alright, well, while we're waiting on them, I guess that means I can I can fix stuff, so that's that's fine. Yeah, it looks like we are actually just getting to the second warm-up now, so we will get another few minutes of suffering before we get into the actual match. It's just uh, how it goes with Osu. You have to suffer through warm-ups if you don't just remove them. All right, let's try this again here. Technical difficulties are fun. Right, perhaps there will be audio now for the uh, Discord stream. There we go. Okay, perfect. All right, we're good. And the song is not as terrible as the background makes it look. Now it is. You have now to wait. Now it's pretty terrible. Yeah, yeah you have to I wait until. Too soon. Yeah, yeah, you have to wait until this thing comes in. Um. Boy, imagine the scenes if we get New York over Ohio and then we have Georgia over SoCal back to back. Like, you know what? I'm here for I'm it. I'm so would love here to see for it. the chaos. Yeah, this past couple weeks feels like a lot of upsets. In... And uh, I do love to see the easy as well. I really hope we do get to see an easy on the Fremont 2 today. I you guess know... we'll see. It's in, it's interesting because last week, um, so there were eight losers bracket round two matches, right? Um, the 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 losing teams, the lower seeded teams in those matches. Do you do you want to know how many maps they won in those eight matches? Let's hear it. They won four. Oh. All eight matches in the losers round two last week were either six one or six zero. So, hoping that now that we're into the semifinals, we get some matches that are a little bit closer. And we just got a 6-3, so we're already doing better. And hopefully the same thing happens here in uh, this match as well. Yeah, we can certainly hope so. Uh, and it looks like we're almost free of this one. Thank goodness. I'm really glad they have DT on. <laughs> I just noticed that. Yeah, it's it made it's much more tolerable. I don't know what any of the smoke that was being sent was talking about. Okay. Whoa. Oh. Whoa. Whoa. Okay. Oh, I don't know what that was all things. about, but but it's it's literally any song other than that one, so I'm I'm happy with it. And now we will go into the stuff. Um, 
Georgia first ban, and wow, that's a quick one. <laughs> it's just DT2 immediately. Yep, going to be banning out the speed pick here. I wonder if Georgia just double bans mechanics and SoCal just double bans gimmick and then we go from there. I would not be surprised to see that be the case. Wow, look at that hidden two first ban from SoCal. All right, we're on the right track go. here, guys. We're on the right track. Let's go. Let's keep it going. Uh, this is either going to be like, what, DT4, maybe free mod 3. I don't know. <laughs> Ready for another. I guess we'll see. Two for two so far. <laughs> this is Georgia very unhappy about the hidden two ban. I'm not sure why they would ever be surprised by that, though. No, I can't imagine they get to play the hidden two very frequently. <laughs> All right. And we will see the Georgia second ban here in a sec. Um... Yeah, I, I'm just expecting this to be a mechanics map, but I can't say for sure which one it will necessarily be. I do think the free mod 3 would make a lot of sense here. Georgia likes free mod, generally speaking, but this one is, like, maybe a little beyond their capacity to win against SoCal. Yeah, it does feel especially speedy this week, whereas Georgia historically has not been a particularly strong speed team. I think it is the oh, it's no only... Much. Oh, interesting. Sorry, just gonna interrupt you there. <laughs> no, you're good. I was just gonna say DT2 being the only uh, DT pick that Georgia did not get a top score on in their last last week's round. And no mod five, there you go. The other gimmick map of the pool. Yay. Don't have to worry about that being picked. Matthew saying, that's for you, Dada. Um, not really sure I quite follow that comment, but I mean, the map is, is stupid, so it's fine. And now we got a maybe, lot of stuff available. Yeah, maybe Matthew just means they're going to pick the DT1, but he forgot to give his pick first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the ticket. Um, yeah, SoCal first pick. I mean, this could be so many different things. This could be DT1, this could be DT4, this could be free mod 3, if they want to go, you know, kind of mechanics-y. This could be any number of other things if they don't want to go raw mechanics. Um, you know, do you just pick, like, the hardest map in the pool and say, here you go, Utami, have fun. Um, that's obviously always kind of a reasonable option if you are SoCal on a late round pool. I think it's actually really difficult for SoCal to pick here, though. I mean, like you mentioned, they have traditionally opted into picking the DTs and the free mods and done pretty well on them. But just last week, Georgia looks so incredibly strong on both the DTs and the free mods that if you're SoCal, you have to think twice about going for either of those categories. And so I think the DTs and the free mods are going to be very hotly contested picks throughout this match. And actually, I would almost say Georgia might have potentially uh, more picks than SoCal. Yeah. At least at first sight. I, I think um, on on this type of pool, like, Georgia is a, maybe a slightly better rounded, or at least based on what we've seen in the tournament, you know, last week, um, for instance. And that's a bizarre first pick. That's a Nomad 3 first pick from SoCal. I, See, I do think it's surprising, but I honestly don't blame them. I think... They're probably a little bit scared of the free mods or the DT, and I think for SoCal, that kind of leaves HD and no mod. Uh, and with no mod 5, no mod 2, and of course HD2 being banned, it does make sense that it's either the no mod 3 or the no mod 4 here. Something that Utami can really pop off on. And I cannot state enough how, like, incredibly good Georgia looked. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just last week. Their they got... scores were so stupid. Like, just unreal from a team. Yeah. I mean, Georgia. Like, they have never been a team that you pick as a, a, a high favorite in USC to go deep and put on, you know, insane performances. But all of a sudden, man. No, and just to highlight it, they got the second best score in the tournament on DT1 and DT4. And they top scored DT3, Fremont 2. And free mod four, along yep. with no mod four. Yep. 
absolutely absurd, like, just out of this world level of scores. I mean, it's one thing to 6 0 your match and put up, like, decent scores against a team that's not great. It's another to 6 0 your match and put up top scores across all matches for the week. And not only put up top scores, but put up top scores on very frequently picked maps against these really strong teams like NorCal, like uh, Florida, like SoCal even. Just so impressive from them. Um, yeah, so we're going to see if they can keep that run going, if they can keep that momentum up from last week. This is a much tougher ask, I would say, against SoCal compared to against a team like, you know, for example, Pennsylvania, which the strength is obviously a, a different tier. Uh, you've got Utami Headstack and You're Cute on the SoCal side on their own first pick. Remiko uh, Lean Fruit, which is Razor Fruit. He must have just renamed like this week. Uh, and Cairo XOXO. Uh, fun names to say, I suppose. And again, you know, you got to expect Utami to put up big scores, but you need good backing scores as well, much like with New York having... Takito as the big carry. Needed good scores from his team as well, so hoping for the same thing here for SoCal from the backing players. Certainly, and I do think Headstack and Your Cute have, in the past, have been the kind of players who have been able to put up pretty good supporting scores. And so I think for the most part, should be able to rely on them, but we are going to have to see. Map is pretty easy off the bat. We are getting to a little bit of the tougher section coming up now in the next 10 seconds or so. This is where we're going to have to start to watch out for misses. Yeah, as we discussed, you know, the last time around, as Lean Fruit finds the first break over on the Georgia side, followed by Cairo, uh, there's a very consistent level of difficulty through most of this pick, and it's represented in both snap and flow aim, plus those very fast bursts at the very end of the map. So you've got a lot to contend with, and it's a long one. I mean, it's, what, three and a half minutes long, so you've got to have that consistency as well as the raw skill level needed to play this properly. SoCal so far displaying that quite nicely in the early goings. Yeah, thankfully, because of how long the map is and how early the misses are, Cairo and Lean Fruit aren't going to be too bad about that one, but Remy, that one's going to feel pretty bad. Big miss out of Remy. Accuracy was so good as well. Your cute does trade it back here, but it's still going to be two FCs to zero, and Cairo and Lean Fruit are pretty far behind, and SoCal going to take a really big lead here early on, already 200,000, almost halfway into the map, and they are just going to keep growing this score lead. Yeah, Utami and Headstack are both just cruising through the first half of this pick. Very solid 99.15 back, and Utami just a little bit lower from Headstack, but still respectable. And, you know, they're players who just look so comfortable on this type of thing. Utami's going to look comfortable on just about everything. Headstack looking to rebound from a little bit of a suboptimal performance last week and starting off the right way here. Nearly 1,000 combo in. It's 260k lead. SoCal, we, you know, the, the instant re like reaction to a Nomad 3 first pick is a little bit of a question mark, but clearly this one looking good so far. Yeah, and not only is it looking good in terms of combos, but look at the accuracies across the board for SoCal. They're just so comfortable on this pick. I mean, your cute finds another miss, but it just doesn't matter at this point. The score advantage is so massive. Georgia has recovered, but it's not nearly going to be enough unless we see at least one of these carries break on the side of SoCal. I do think if we see both of them break, there's certainly going to be enough time, but it's such a tall ask when they look so good here. Yeah, your cute has had a couple more misses, which is, you know, helping Georgia. But without an FC, it's very much a struggle no matter what against uh, two FCs on the other side. They do get through the burst, which your cute doesn't, but they need Headstack or Yutami to break, and it's just not happening. Cairo with a late miss, and there goes Razor Fruit as well. So that's pretty much going to seal the deal on this pick. SoCal with a solid first map here. Yeah, and it looks like it's just going to be the double FC out of SoCal on this Nomad 3. Very strong first pick coming out of them. Of oh, course. Head stack. Oh, no double FC. But it's okay. It's all right. Utami is here to make everything just a little bit easier for SoCal as he pulls off the FC to open up the match. A 2.2 mil score from SoCal, very respectable, despite the lower score from your cute. And that is the 1-0 start that they were looking for. That's going to be a plus one to the Atami top score counter. Georgia, of course, does have the next pick here. And I feel like they have so many options. 
do feel like they probably want to change it up from the Nomad. Uh, so maybe they go for something like a DT pick here. I don't know what you go here to be honest. Uh, there is HR as well. There's, oh man, yeah. There, I mean, there's all the hard rocks. There's three DTs, all the free mods as well. And like I said at the beginning, Georgia has historically felt like a team that is quite good at free mods. This free mod two is probably an option that's on the table for them in this match. I've got to think. Yeah, especially with uh, SoCal banning down at the HC2, you have to think they're going to feel a little bit less comfortable on the AR8. Because yeah. generally, you would typically only expect to see one person, of course, on the Hard Rock, which means two players do have to be fairly comfortable on AR8 of some sort. And the bright side there, I guess, is that you have Utami Matthew, and you can go like hidden on one and Nomad on the other on that type of map, but... I don't know. We'll see if it, if it does end up getting picked. First of all, though, it's going to be Precision. It's going to be Hard Rock 2, the CS 6.5, as the first yeah, pick from Georgia. Burleys. Also, very much banger. And, uh, well, it just so happens that Georgia top scored the HR2 last week as well. So <laughs> they're going to feel pretty good about this one. It doesn't feel like SoCal has a super great roster for Precision. I mean, Atami... Obviously a very strong player, but not really known for uh, precision in any way. Yeah, I think at this star rating he'll be, he'll be able to comfortably play just about anything, but it's more about who they have in as the teammates, which I think is like, what, Headstack and maybe Chizaro? I, I'm not actually sure, but... Yeah, it's tough to say. I do think Chizaro would make a lot of sense on the uh, hard rock here. Meanwhile, Remiko... Razorfruit and Stacker Joe on the Georgia side. I suppose all feel comfy with the Precision. <laughs> Wait on the third for SoCal here. It's your cute, I guess. Okay. Very interesting. Your cute Hard Rock 2 player. Um, yeah, sure, why not? I, I don't know. <laughs> they know better than I do. I guess so, yeah. I, mean, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it's also very possible they just don't have anyone else and you're cute to just kind of getting tossed in here, thrown like, to the wolves a little bit as the third player, but yeah, we'll cause, see. Because, I mean, this wasn't ever going to be Matthew. It wasn't going to be Leg Okami. So it's just kind of whoever's left over at that point. But we'll see how it goes. Georgia looking to tie things up at the early 1-1. One to one. This one, uh, I don't know, spiritually kind of similar to last week's Hard Rock 2. Some bursts, some streams, some plenty of uh, sliders. That one really awkward wiggle stream near the end. Yeah, and there goes Headstack. Going to be the first one to find a miss here. And while it's early... Ooh, everybody made it through that first big cut stream. While it's early, this is a short map. So misses can matter pretty quickly. It looks like despite the miss, SoCal is going to hold on to the lead for now just off of accuracy, but your Q drops a ton of accuracy, and as we go farther into the map, they should matter more, but Remy finds a really big miss, and it's going to give the advantage right back to SoCal. Headstack has recovered very nicely. There goes Razorfruit as well. And Utami, your Q, still holding the full combos. This is not a good situation for Georgia, as Razorfruit and Sacker Joe both break again. Headstack and your Q breaking. But Utami is just uh, casually holding the lone FC left in the lobby, and it's a 100k lead for SoCal. If he breaks, the door can open back up, but uh, I don't know that I'd want to put my money on Utami breaking on a semifinals pool. If I were Georgia, I would be uh, a lot more worried about my own combo than worrying about what Utami does. They are yeah, and Utami is just kind of doing Utami things. You mentioned how short this map was. They're very quickly running out of time. And if Utami doesn't break in the next 10, 15 seconds, it's probably going to be over. But Remy finds a miss. That's not what they need. And honestly, this section is just should be pretty easy, even though we see another miss out of Joe. And, and Razor Fruit. Is... Oh my goodness. Okay. On the slow part. You can't triple reset on the easiest part of the map. Like, you, you it, it's just going to lose you the pick. And Stacker Joe full misses that next stream. And this is just over, and then some. 
as Utami is going to just carry an FC into the ending with a recovered combo from Headstack and Yurkyu before the ladder finally misses again, but it just doesn't matter anymore. And, uh, yeah, that is going to be another very decisive point for SoCal. The Hard Rock 2 pick, uh, really not working out for them. I have to wonder if it's just nerves from Georgia, because surely you don't pick Hard Rock 2 with a 1 million score against a team like SoCal, and so maybe just underperforming compared to practice scores here. Yeah, that... I mean, yeah, they, that's just, like match nerves on precision um that's what can happen you can just miss anywhere because tiny circles uh, make it very easy to break and when uh, utami like was what 100k short of a 1v3 i mean not a lot you can do about that either when the guy you know casually just fc's the first two maps of the match without really blinking it uh, is a tough task if you're georgia to do anything about that and that's an early consolidated breakpoint, and you don't want the pressure to get on you early on if you're Georgia in this one, because against a team like SoCal who can, you know, kind of outskill cap you on stuff, it's not going to be a fun time. Yeah, SoCal going to be looking to convert this breakpoint with their next pick here, and uh, I wonder if we do see them. Oh, is that a Nomad Four pick? I is it? I haven't. No, okay. I, would say I haven't seen anything, but maybe. I am imagining things. Uh, I, I don't think we're going to see the Nomad for I... I wonder if we do see them go for something like a hidden pick uh, that Georgia has looked the least comfortable on recently. You know, I could see like Nomad 4, Hidden 1, Hidden 3. I could see just about anything from, from SoCal here. I, just based on those first two picks, like, you know, we said that Georgia felt like they had a lot of different picks that would be open to them, but uh, if they're having a rough day performance-wise, then that script kind of flips around. It does, and uh, SoCal is not really one of those teams that you can afford to have a bad day against. And it is gonna, just going to be the DT3 here, Caramel Heaven. Very aim-intensive, uh, something you'd expect Tommy to do quite well <laughs> on. But, I mean, what wouldn't you? That's a very good point. <laughs> <laughs> and the question is, who is going to be here on Georgia to match you, Tommy? Uh, I do think we're just going to have Remy and Razor, of course, still in for this one. Uh, and I wonder if we see Joe, maybe, back in as the mm -hmm. third? Hard to say. Yeah. Uh, package show Gaby, Cairo, or Oxalot. I don't know. Cairo, Cairo well, I guess. Yeah. I haven't been able to really see enough of Georgia's matches to have a great feel for kind of who their fill players tend to be. Yeah. But I guess it's Cairo. It to just be Cairo. And Lego Kami is well going to come in, uh, which will be this debut in this match after we did see the same roster for SoCal in the first two picks. Let's see how his warm-up is doing him. Tommy, you're cute. Chilling in the lobby. They're warriors. They're hanging out, playing everything so far. And uh, I don't know. But Tommy, he's going to look to take the the uh, three-map FC streak. Georgia really does not want to fall behind an early consolidated break point. So no, they don't. got to put the rest forward. Yeah, and especially when it's first to six, going down three nothing just feels so bad. It is only one break point though, regardless. Remiko with the early breaks. Another wow. <laughs> not the way he wanted to start off. Plenty of maps still to go, but not a good intro for him. You know, he was their huge, huge carry last week. And if he is not able to put up the kind of scores that he is capable of based on that performance, then Georgia might be in a pretty rough spot in this match. Yeah, Remy is not going to be too far behind, though. He should be able to recover, but we are getting to the hard part of the map now. Everybody going to be holding early on. Pretty big accuracy advantage for SoCal, though. On a double miss out of Razor and your Q, just going to be a trade, so no advantage gained either way, and SoCal going to stay in the lead for now. There goes Remy, and... though, again, though. Oh. Not what you want to see. I mean, the, the first break wasn't the worst thing in the world, but it starts to get bad when you miss, you know, 400 plus combo past a quarter towards a third of the way through when it's just Cairo left against a double FC on Utami and Leg Okami. 
Yeah, not only is it a double FC, but their accuracies are so, so strong that Georgia just cannot match in combo or in accuracy. And with how short this map is, this score advantage is just going to jettison in the last half of this map here. There is the Very cute. break. Oh, it's a double break. Lego Kami follows it up. It's only 130k in lead. That really opened things back up for Georgia. As long as Cairo continues to hold, the combined combo of Razorfruit and Remiko is going to bring this back over. But there goes Razorfruit and Cairo. Oh, they couldn't afford oh, that two thirds of the way through. They had their chance, but they threw it all away with those misses. Remy just does not have anywhere near the combo needed to match you, Tommy. And especially now with your cute and but Lego Kami both recovering, only a quarter of the map to go and a score bar just going so far over to that left side that I don't think there's any time to come back here for Georgia. Yeah, there's like a couple hundred thousand points left maybe, but with another break from Cairo and with the backing combo behind you, Tommy, on your cute and Lego Kami, eh, it's unfortunate for Georgia because they had the opportunity on this, but SoCal just wore them down by holding the combo and the important part. And oh yeah, there's that Utami guy with the FC, yeah. and let's see what happens Don't in the it. ending here. We're gonna see how he closes out this map quite well, perhaps, and he does it. It's it. the there DT3 it SS from Utami. You know, he's three for three. He's thrown in an SS for good measure. You could say the man is perhaps a bit upset about how things went last week, and he's taking it out on Georgia. <laughs> yeah, you know, Georgia, Georgia, did not ask for this. <laughs> Georgia did not deserve this, man. <laughs> Justice for Georgia. Come on. <laughs> what, did, what did Georgia do to you, Tommy? Come on. <laughs> and uh, like you said, it's going to be three SCs, three top scores, and three points for you, Tommy. Uh, um, he's going to look to continue that streak. Um, but it is Georgia's pick. I... I mean, normally I would have suggested HR1 being a decent pick for them, but after that HR2, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe we just see them go for a free mod here. Yeah, I think, um, you know, maybe a free mod too. Just, you know, the, the CS5 AR8, the, the old Georgia standby might not be a bad idea. Um, Nomad, I mean, technically speaking, like you could go Nomad 4, you could go one of those hiddens. I, I, I don't know. You know, you, what, like, uh, was it was it Mike Tyson that said uh, everyone everyone has a plan until they get punched in the mouth? Um, that's that's kind of kind of where it's Georgia true. is right now. Like, you, yeah. you have all these grand ideas of what your picks are going to be and how the match is going to go, and then you suddenly go down a break point and you have somebody who's FC'd all three maps in a row against you, and you're like, okay, I'm not really sure anymore. Yeah, you heard it here first. Uh, if you're playing against Utami, just punch him in the mouth before the match, and uh, you might be good to go. It is going to be the Nomad 4, though. So I do think this makes a lot of sense. They have a really good score on this last week. Obviously, this one, not going to be a super uh, difficult map compared to a lot of other picks in the pool. And I do think that's going to be something in Georgia's favor, because it's going to be less so something that Utami can just kind of solo carry here. Yeah, this is uh, a little bit more accessible than some of the other maps in the pool, but it, it, it still has its challenging aspects to it. Um, I think, you know, the, the, the slider aim combined with the stream aim makes for a little bit of a different approach to a pick than some of the previous ones in this, in this match on the first three. Um... It looks like we are just going to be seeing uh, Headstack back in, and actually, Gabby, first appearance here today, into the tech pick. Yeah, that's a player who, uh, let's see, did put up a good showing at least in the Pennsylvania match. I'm not looking at their other match right at the moment, but uh, did have the second best match cost in that one. Um, put up some good scores on, uh, like, the free mod, as well as some of the nomads and hiddens. He was in for a fair amount of picks last week. So it's kind of, I mean, they've just picked kind of around him by chance so far this match. So, oh, who knows, maybe uh, you get somebody new in and they can try to be a little bit of a difference maker for the team. Yeah, we will certainly see. Did put up a 
500k on last week's No Mod 4. Not too bad, but that it is going to be the first miss. That No Mod 4 was like way different than this one, and I would argue maybe harder. So it's a, it's a yeah. different style of map. I don't know that you can really directly compare it, which uh, for better or for worse, I guess, in that regard. Yep. Kelly is going to recover for now. Uh, we haven't really got into the super tricky part of the map, though, so that is where we're going to have to look out for breaks. And already, Georgia going to be on the back foot here. It's yeah. not a very long map either, only a quarter of the way through. And Ooh, there goes Remiko is... again. Not having the best time today, and that's almost exactly halfway through, plus another break at exactly halfway through. SoCal now a triple FC against a single FC on Razor Fruit. And it's in like this easier part as well, so you can build up a little combo before we go into the back half of the pick. And that being said though, Gabby is not too far behind. That's honestly effectively an FC. So if we do see two misses out of SoCal, mm. there is a chance, but there goes Gabby and your cute does trade. Is gonna favor Georgia just a little bit, but is still the two FCs to one, and neither of those two FCs are showing any signs of dropping. Gabby drops again, and SoCal just looks so good today. Headstack finally drops so with you, Tommy holding. It's not enough. Yeah, and there goes as they Razor come. Fruit. And yep. uh, I don't think anyone's surprised. This is just Utami doing Utami things. 99.67. Pretty ridiculous accuracy on this map, too. <laughs> All right. Utami's not, Utami's not normal. He's four for four. Four for four. And this Ack. Like 99.6. I mean, what do you do? What are you supposed to do? You know, I, w I wasn't sure if this map, if this map pool would be um, like a skill cap concern where Utami could just 1v9. Um, and I, I don't know. I mean, he still needs decent backing scores from his teammates, but he's also casually just FCing everything and making it look really easy. Yeah. I feel like if you're Georgia, you have to wonder. Can you get Utami to miss something in this match? <laughs> yeah, eventually, like, I, I don't know when the last time was I saw somebody FC a match. Like, it <laughs> is not something that happens very often, especially not in, like, best of 11 scenario. And it's so unfortunate that it's happening here because all of the hopes that we had for Georgia it's like it just doesn't matter because Utami is going to come in and FC everything and give his team like an automatic two, three hundred thousand point buff because nobody on Georgia is FCing these maps. And Remiko, who had their huge performance last week, I mean, he bottom scores with 41k on Nomad 4. He like second lowest scores on DT3. He 510k on Hard Rock 2. Like he's just not having the match they need him to compared to last week, which was a big part of why they had such a run through those couple of matches. Yeah, a bit of an off day possibly for Remy. See the nice FCU Tommies in the chat. One for each map he's FC'd so far. <laughs> <laughs> it is going to be the DT1, another map you'd expect Utami to uh, be pretty comfortable no. on. Utami will break on the slider stream at the end. <laughs> I am calling this you right might be now. Right. <laughs> that oh, slider man. stream is so stupid. Sorry, Dada. That slider stream is stupid. I don't know if he's even still watching. <laughs> it's I don't, I, I'm not a not a particular fan of that one aspect of this map. That is fair. Can Dada be the first to claim Utami's combo here? <laughs> we are going to see Axolotl in for the first time, though. Otherwise, Cairo back in for the DT makes a lot of sense. I do think it makes a lot of sense as well to sub Remy out here, give them a break. Uh, just considering how this match has gone so far, reset the mental, and uh, maybe back in for the next match. But we are going to see Zaron maybe for SoCal. Nope, it's going to be Headstack instead. Well, that's a that's a big plus for SoCal this this match as well. That uh, Headstack is playing very very well. He had a little bit of a rough go of things in their match last week against Washington. Um, kind of mid-tier scores. Now he's getting a little back toward what he's capable of, which is helping SoCal out a lot as a support for Utami's FCs. But uh, George's not out of it yet. I mean, 4-0 looks bad, but it's only one consolidated break point so far. This would be a, this would be a second. This is true. SoCal, of course, looking to consolidate the second one with this pick. And uh, if SoCal wins here, then, uh, yeah, then down 5 nothing. It's uh, it's pretty rough. 
then it's some then it's uh, some some rough sledding for Georgia um, in a state that doesn't get any snow. That's even worse. Um, so we'll see we'll see what they can do here. They they really need a break point back here on this DT one pick. Yes, they do. And SoCal is one of those teams that while well, you can certainly take some points off them, it's not really a team you can expect to be able to take off five six points in a row. And so Georgia has quite the tall task ahead of them here. I uh, should be getting into the map any second now. I think it didn't connect. I think we probably need an abort. Because it didn't, it was just sitting on the loading thing. So, and oh. I panicked and it is not functioning. So I'm going to say that we maybe need an abort, but I'm not sure. Oh, it looks like we're oh. into it. Okay, maybe we're into it. I don't know what's going on in that case. Let's see if Oxalotl gets in. Yeah, just Hello, waiting on Oxalotl. Oxalotl now. Paging Dr. Oxalotl to the DT1 floor. Dr. Oxalotl to DT1. Thank you. A little bit late. Oh, wait, now we're getting an abort. Uh, oh. Wait, now that everybody's finally in! <laughs> oh, no. no! It's so cursed. I don't know if he was even in or not. I don't know what's going on. Oh, we're going to try again. <laughs> All right, attempt two for Oxalotl. Oh, maybe Lego Kami too. Who knows at this point? <laughs> the Georgia zone is for loading and unloading only. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, all right. Everybody's showing in the client, but will they connect to the map? Bancho? Seems server. like hey! it. Hey, all right. We are playing the map. How about it? All right. We're so proud of Bancho. My favorite server on which to play video games. In fact, there's nothing better. Oh, wait. Uh, it, oh, okay. Uh, we were almost proud of Poncho. I don't know what I was thinking. I you're get... you're doing so well. All right, here we go. Uh, wait, oh. is it Utami? Utami's game uh, is frozen. All right, well, we we, uh, we abort again, I guess. Because he's not uh, playing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, third try, third try, third try, third try, third try, third try. Third try, third try. One of these days, Boncho will help us out a little bit. Third time's the charm, we hope. Oh my god. Surely we'll play it eventually, right, chat? Surely. <laughs> Maybe DT1 is just not ready for your Tommy. Yeah, um... As if there weren't enough problems with DT maps in the Ozu Tournament client in the first place. Now we've got Utami having problems, Oxalotl having problems, Lego Kami having problems. Uh, all right, all right. This is the this is the time. I I have confidence. I feel in my heart of hearts that this Everybody will be the chance we need. Will connect. Speaking of client, there is nothing quite like watching halftime map played in the OC client. I have there fortunately never had the opportunity or misfortune to have to see that. So. I will consider myself lucky. Absolutely. Let's hope. Let's hope it stays that way. <laughs> and uh, everybody finally connected. Oh my goodness. Let's go. Let's go, man. Pog. Let's go, man. And, and uh, uh, Utami gonna hold the SS early on. Don't even. Nobody just, else. I'm is. just not even gonna bother watching his screen. It just doesn't matter. I'm just gonna assume that it's an FC over there, no matter what. It's everybody else that's where you need to uh, be watching. And it's Oxalotl with the break and the massive accuracy drop as well, down to 90%. Not what Georgia needed to have happen here. A third of the way through, and they are going to now be down to 180k quickly. Yeah, and the accuracy difference is just so massive across the board, especially with Axolotl finding another miss that even without a huge combo advantage, the score is just already so far in SoCal's favor. It's not a long map either, already halfway through, and the score lead is massive. They desperately need two misses within the next 10 seconds, and they need to hold on to their own combos on the side of Georgia. Oh, head stack falls. Okay. The door is yeah. open like a fraction. Razor Fruit and Cairo are still holding on to the FCs. Their accuracy is a bit behind Utami and Lego Kami, but Oxalotl has the combo lead now. And the problem is he's so far behind on accuracy, and he breaks again that SoCal isn't going to feel too uncomfortable as of yet. Yeah, SoCal opens the door and uh, Axolotl slams it on his own hand, <laughs> missing again. 
<laughs> SoCal still holding the two SCs. <laughs> why, do, why does he have to be a sadist and a, or a masochist? Like, why, why, why do we need masochists on the Georgia side? Like, you shouldn't be wanting to slam the door on your own hand, man. Like, that's just not how these matches are supposed to go. Uh, Cairo late break into the... Oh my god, Utami. All right, he's five for five. I'm just going to get up and walk away if he FCs the next map. This is so Surely. stupid. They double FC, and actually, they ended up with identical accuracy, and Lego Kami out but score there you go utami. good news utami has been dethroned by his own teammate <laughs> oh my God. no longer top map top score on every single map <laughs> it was only it was it's literally two thousand points but three fcs in total and uh utami like utami just having themselves a good old time cairo saying this is a massacre uh well yeah kind uh, of it's not over yet yeah, Georgia has the next pick. Uh, I mean, do you ever just see Georgia go, what is the hardest map left in the pool? Hidden, hidden one. That, that Utami will break on. Oh, uh, okay. actually, yes, because I think this is probably the hardest map to FC. This and Nomad 1 are probably the two hardest maps to FC in the pool, right? Like, I wouldn't they're, disagree, they're but Utami is also so good at hidden. Yeah. We'll see. <laughs> It, it's not that he's not good at hidden so much as that this map is just really long and really hard. It is. The flow aim as well is just so, like, difficult to be consistent on. Uh, most players are not super comfortable on the flow aim skill set nearly as much as just your standard aim. And so I do expect we are going to see, of course, uh, Utami, Headstack, and maybe your cute the last player for SoCal. Uh, and I do think we'll probably see Remy back in for this one on the side of Georgia. Yeah, I th like. Are the six in right now? Just the six you're gonna see on this? I feel like I wouldn't it might be surprised. Just be the case. We might be getting Gabby in though. We'll see. Well, on the bright side. This is a very good song. It is. A nice song to uh, potentially end off the match. <laughs> and uh, SoCal seems to be a bit back to form after last week's performance. Yeah, this is like night and day SoCal between this match and the previous one for them. Like, it's a completely different team. Which is good for them and bad for everyone else. Pretty much, and... Georgia, it feels like, is just not having a great day either. After they looked so strong last week, there was definitely some question as to how SoCal would do against them, but ah, they seem to be a little bit off today, not putting up nearly the same caliber of performances, unfortunately. And there is still the HD1, of course. We'll have to see how they can do on this one. Everybody's still holding into the first break here. Yeah, everybody looked. Everybody looked like, in terms of you know cursor movement and stuff, pretty comfortable with that first part. Headstack is gonna actually be the first to break, so uh, Georgia might be able to get their first lead of the entire match. I think uh, here in a sec in this uh, you know first verse section here. So maybe it's a minor though. victory for them. Sure, surely it goes over eventually. You like the 94 think. hack on Remiko, notwithstanding, Gaby has a SS and Lee, and uh, Rizru has 99.75. Surely this goes over sooner or later. There. Any second now. Oh, please, no. please for George's sake, at least let them have a lead in this map. <laughs> Come on. Oh, it's so brutal. How is this still not going over? I oh think it's my, just Razor it's, Fruit just killed the accuracy uh, and uh it's a three-way 99 out of socal oh you're cute finally dropping some accuracy and there's still no misses for georgia into the first ki -I. it's gotta go over no really it has real. to oh no. there's no way wait, it was a cute. three wait oh. you're cute following you tommy breaks now it has it's to oh, it's finally missed. utami <laughs> breaks the fc streak at five and Georgia takes their first lead of the entire match. It has happened. Gods can uh, bleed. This day will go down in history as the day that Georgia had a lead against SoCal for at least part of the map. <laughs> uh, you know. It's 40k and Gaby has a 99.4 AC FC and Remiko is, well, he's, he's FCing. I don't care about the accuracy, he is FCing. 
Yeah, kind of the only shining light for SoCal right now is Headstack, not too far behind after that early miss, but they are going to need a couple misses out of Georgia now. Of course, this is a very difficult map. And it doesn't really, I mean, you have this slightly slow part here, and then it kind of just goes back into being difficult again. Your cute though falls. Is this the gap in SoCal's armor? Is the hidden flow aim of all the things to, to be a little weaker on as Gaby Might does be, break the FC? Yeah, Remy uh, still holding. It's it's all on Remyko's shoulders right now. He has to hold. He is shaking so oh my goodness, he's shaking so hard. Oh, oh we are watching no. another Miles in the making. I am so scared for Remyko. I mean, it doesn't matter how much you shake as long as you don't miss. Anutami, though, has recovered very nicely as well as Razor, so uh, it is really just Headstack that will bring the score lead back if Remy finds a miss. Oh, it's going to be breaks. holding for now. Oh, that's so huge. A little bit of pressure off Remy because now if Remy misses, Razor Fruit is there matching Anutami, and so Georgia is going to have a little bit of leeway a quarter of the way into the map, and Remy goes on. This is the Remy Co we were expecting after the performances from last week. Gaby falls, but it really doesn't matter what he does at this point. Because Headstack trades it back, and Remy Co and Razor Fruit are going to hold on to this combo advantage for SoCal. Or for Georgia, excuse me, against SoCal, I, my brain. Um, you know, Tommy and Yurki are doing what they can, but it's just nowhere near enough unless Georgia suffers a full meltdown in the last quarter. It's not, and there's honestly not that much time left in the map. The score lead has gotten so massive, and there Remy. are combos there, but Razor has recovered. Remy does find a miss, but I don't think there's going to be enough time. Not with Headstack and Yurkute both breaking. It, there certainly will not be. It doesn't even matter with Razor Fruit and Utami at this point. And this is going oh, to be Georgia. I think. Putting a point it, on the board. It's should be at 200,000 score difference. Georgia finally going to be claiming their first point here. One miss out of Utami, one map lost. Uh, everybody finding misses on that last pattern, except for Utami and Razor. And Georgia, I think they're going to be happy that they at least won one map here. Uh, but of course, SoCal does have the next pick, and clearly they have a lot of options. And you know what's wild about this entire thing? is that came down to 150k, which means if Utami hadn't missed and had kept yeah. the FC streak up, it would have, would have been it. a SoCal win. Yeah. <laughs> he yep. ended up top scoring that map anyway, by the way. Despite everything that Remiko did with a 300 and something higher combo, uh, he, he uh, Utami still outscored by 2,000 points because, of course... But. Yeah, got the pretty big accuracy advantage over Remy on the score V2 here. But hey, Georgia has caused SoCal to bleed. It is doable. They have. SoCal, don't think they're going to be too shaken. Should get right back into it with their next pick. Yeah, no, they just Georgia. pick the TT4 and win, but you know, it's fine. <laughs> There you go. You know, a small, a small slicker of hope for uh, for Georgia here. I'm actually not a hundred percent sure as to what I expect SoCal to pick here. I'd say it does feel like they could pick pretty much anything aside from Hard Rock would be okay for a SoCal. Georgia wants to pick tiebreaker. Well, not only is it not their pick, but also you can't do that. <laughs> so, not really sure what that's about. Um, free mod three. So we talked about Georgia being good at free mods, but uh, we also talked about SoCal being good at speed. And that is the name of the game on this one. It is, and Georgia did ban out the other speed map in the pool DT too. So uh, despite them being f good on free mods, I think speed free mod tends to be their weaker free mod of the pool. But we'll see what they can do here against the likes of Shuzaron and Utami. Probably going to see Headstack coming back in. Is this um, uh, Utami hidden? Shazaron Nomad Headstack Hardback? 
I would imagine sure. so. We are just waiting on Georgia to start at their lineup. We Cairo is Cairo. currently on the yeah. wrong team. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> need that guy to move. <laughs> it, Headstack is in the lobby. Uh, just waiting for his so slot I'm to open assuming, up. Yeah, I'm assuming he's going to go over into slot two once... Uh, once Cairo moves, there it is. Utami, Headstack, Chazaron looks to be the roster. Gaby, Razorfruit, and Remiko for Georgia. Let's see here. That looks like we're set. So we'll just have to see what they go for mods. And the yeah. MP start is in, so we'll find out shortly. Georgia reverse I... sweep? Question mark? Or SoCal closing it out, 6-1. to one. Yeah, reverse sweep could be in the cards, possibly. I think Georgia is going to need a, uh, a royal flush here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they need some serious luck. Uh, and some underperformance, and they need to absolutely just redline themselves. It is Utami hidden headset hard rock, Jaro Nomad, Gaby hidden Razor Fruit Hard Rock, and Remiko Nomad. So kind of the expected. Also nice that they're kind of matching, so the mods are in the same slots on either team. That's cool. We appreciate a little bit of aesthetic symmetry. We do. Gotta please the chatters. And uh, again, this is a a lot of aim component in several sections of it to. Uh, you know, kind of counterbalance out the raw speed. And you do see Headstack with the early aim miss on Hard Rock for SoCal. So lead goes to Georgia in the early stages. Yeah, but Utami has not missed yet. That has been the key so far. <laughs> yeah, FFCs, they win automatically based on a sample size of uh, five wins and one loss. That's about as big of a sample size as you could possibly need, right? Exactly, exactly. N equals I, uh... six. Oh, there goes Chizaro in two. Oh, there you go. Um, Just don't let my uh, my stats prof hear you. As Chizaro finds another miss, <laughs> gonna be three SCs to one early on. <laughs> <laughs> I love statistics. What do you mean? I love I love extrapolating from incomplete data. <laughs> of course. <laughs> um, you know, don't call it a comeback, but Georgia is going to take a bit of a lead here in the early goings of this pick and try to get a second point on the board. This would be a break point as well, which they've really not come close to on any of SoCal's previous maps. No, they haven't. Something about N equals six. Normal distribution <laughs> definitely applies. <laughs> <laughs> well, Utami's still holding the FC, so we'll be able to test our hypothesis here. God, my stats course is too far in the past for this crap, man. <laughs> uh... It's okay, I just took one this summer, so I can confirm we do nothing but accurate statistics here. I to be to be more real Oh my god, Utami broke. Okay. Wait, okay. it's a three-way FC for Georgia still, and a no-way FC for SoCal, with a 600 combo on Chizaron as their best current combo on the map. Um yeah, this is actually really big for Georgia. Yeah. Three-way FC halfway to the map now. Man, two as the map is so long. Oh, 2 AFC, uh, but because the map is so long, their scores are only at 300k halfway into the map, which means they still have 600,000 points to be gained here. So their scores, if they can hold the FCs, are just going to skyrocket towards the end of this map. And you're going to see the score lead increase so much more. Uh, it's going to be a lot bigger than it already is. So SoCal desperately needs a double miss. And even if they see the double miss, all they have is Shazaron on the 800 combo. And at this point in the map, I don't know if it's going to be enough. Yeah, I mean, even with Gaby struggling, there was Shazaron again, and it's just this double FC. I think with Shazaron missing, that's probably going to be it. I don't think they can ever come back here. Yeah. Razorfruit and Remiko looking so strong here, keeping Georgia's hopes alive. You know for the talk of Georgia feeling like they had a lot of picks and being good at free mod, it seemed really unlikely for a long time, but they're at least going to probably be putting a second point on the board here, and they're going to get kind of deeper into this pool where things maybe are a little less crystallized in South California's favor. 
And maybe Georgia can look to make things interesting because there's a break from from Headstack, and that's just going to be the nail in the coffin as if they're, you know, needed another one, I guess, just to make sure that whoever's in there can't breathe if they uh, come back and uh, to the land of the living. Because sure. uh, Georgia is just but closing this off. For sure, and 5-2 feels like a lot, but after this one, it's Georgia's pick, and if Georgia is able to consolidate this break point, all of a sudden, they're only down one break point against SoCal here. And it becomes a much closer match, potentially. And, I mean, we saw last week as Remiko throws in a very late break, unfortunately will not be able to close out the FC. Uh, we, we saw last week, right, NorCal versus New York. New York came back from 5-2 to two down, won three points in a row to force a tiebreaker. And so that thought being in the back of your mind as Georgia picks up a big break point, 800,000, and oh, Razor's sadly not going to get the FC finding the slider break right at the end. This just gets a little more interesting. That was not an FC, Freddy. Don't tell him nice FC because he didn't FC. Man. And uh, Utami is just uh, consistently getting the uh, same number of misses as Georgia has points. So uh, three <laughs> so, miss from Utami three, next match. Three miss coming. <laughs> three miss coming. Yep. On whatever is next. Georgia will put a third point on the board and put a little more scoreboard pressure on SoCal. Um... Now, as always, the question will be for Georgia, what do you pick at this juncture? Down five to two, but with at least one break point back in your favor. And all things considered, as scary as SoCal is, that was a pretty decisive performance from Georgia. I feel like, surely, you just try going for another free mod here. <clears throat> I mean, no mod six euphoria sadly not gonna be an option today boy that that map doesn't even make sense as a no mod six it's just all mechanics it doesn't. it's like 200 bpm streams for three minutes and then just eight star aim patterns like how would that fit as a no mod six uh. <laughs> it's free mod one they're gonna stay in the free mod pool it's gonna be our first sighting of the, the uh, dtm9 noah free mod pick and uh, i kind of like this one uh, a kind of just tricky you know, demanding free mod in a different way than the free mod three. It is, and it's going to be somewhat techy, if I recall correctly. Yes, this is a and, uh, little bit in that vein. Yeah, and we have had seen Georgia put up some very good tech scores. Unfortunately, uh, not so much with this tech pick, but they have historically looked good on on tech picks throughout this tournament. Yeah, this is, a, I think, again, going to be a pretty straightforward in terms of who takes what mods. And it will just come down to whether or not Utami FCs, because now we have a sample size of seven. Our, our sample size is increased by, uh, you know, whatever percent that is, going from six <laughs> to seven. Um, math. I couldn't tell you. So I want to sort that for me. Um, Which chat, yeah. Twitch chat, Help please, a please be my, please be my calculator. <laughs> um, so Tommy Headstack, you're cute. Remiko, Razor Fruit, and somebody. I don't know who that somebody will be. It, of course, yeah, I think was Gaby. Probably, but... Yeah, I do think we just see Gaby again because they do need somebody to take up that hidden slot. Yep, and there he is. He was in for the no mod four. He was in for the free mod three. So free mod one kind of being right in the sweet spot between those. So same, uh, presumably same mods for all six players. And uh, another, I mean, every point is big once you're down match points, but you know, you, you get this one for Georgia, you get to three points. You put a little bit of pressure back on SoCal because if Georgia wins this, SoCal will be down to their last pick and they are going to switch it up. It's Utami on no mod, you're cute on hidden. Yeah, and I think... Probably the thought for SoCal is they just want Utami to be able to get that FC, take the pressure of the hidden off of him, oh. and uh, hope he can put up a good score here. Very early miss for Headstack, and Utami dropping a ton of accuracy as well, so very, very early lead over to Georgia. Um, but it is much too early for that to be super important in the grand scheme of the map here. And I will say for Georgia, sometimes when you are on match point, it does take a little bit of pressure off in a strange sense. You kind of just don't have anything else to lose with your picks. 
Yeah, that, that nothing to lose feeling can really help out, but boy, it doesn't seem to be helping out Remiko as he suffers a couple of misses. That pattern is pretty tricky with Hard Rock, and he kind of showed it there, and unfortunately, another break. Though Head Stack broke as well, so it's not going to be quite the end of the world as of yet. The Hard Rock player is struggling on this one a little bit. That is a very tricky map with Hard Rock, and so the misses from both of those players are going to keep it pretty even. Uh, and it is just going to be two FCs to two. Gaby Ack, by the way, really helping things out for Georgia since uh, Remiko is a bit behind head sack, but Gaby's ahead of your Q. Yeah, but it seems like with Remy struggling on the accuracy Ooh. much more than head stack. Zerkal is going to take the lead, but double miss out of head stack. It's only Utami holding, but it's a double FC for Gaby and Razor Fruit. Georgia takes over the lead so quickly, and there's only a quarter of this map to go. They're going to need misses out of Georgia soon. Remy finds the miss, but it's not the one they need. Gaby. Georgia is going to start to run away with this. There's Gaby as well. Utami versus Razor Fruit now, but Razor Fruit has more than enough score to do it. This is on the Nomad too. Should be a little bit easier. This gets tight if he misses in the next like couple seconds, but if he makes it through this stream, it should be okay, and he does. And that's another point by 70k but that's all you need it's another point for georgia don't call it a comeback that's three straight and that does disprove the theory utami did fc and they lost it anyway so unfortunately yeah. i'm not going to be getting published this month call up you trying uh, to tell my, me our call up my funding then cut that right off you trying to tell me that our sample size of seven was unreliable this is, this is absurd. I cannot believe that this was the case, but it does seem to have been, unfortunately. But yeah, now... SoCal, though, going to be sweating a little bit here. Three points dropped in a row. I mean, they do have the pick, but after that, they definitely don't want to be going for free mod. Uh, they do still have the DT pool that they could look towards. I expect they probably will. Uh, but this is honestly starting to get scary because if SoCal drops this point, it's 5-4, Georgia has the next pick, and all of a sudden you're looking at a potential tiebreaker here. But we're going to go into the Hard Rock pool with Hard Rock 3, and we unfortunately do know how the last Hard Rock in this match went back way towards the beginning. Georgia's first pick, Hard Rock 2, that they lost by almost a million points. So, and not only did they lose it by a million points, they also scored about a million points. So yeah, this is not too hot of a performance. And we are going to be seeing Cairo back in for this one. But uh, yeah, we're going to need this one to go a whole lot better for Georgia than the last Hard Rock. You know, this one a little bit aimier, despite being that alt kind of BPM. It is a very aim heavy sort of alt pick. Maybe that'll go better for them. Hard to say for sure, but it kind of needs to if they want to extend this match out into their last pick. Does, but SoCal have certainly been no slouches on the aim picks. They have looked fairly good on them so far, and I wouldn't expect anything less in this map, but momentum squarely in George's favor now, and that can certainly play a role on the mental aspect of these maps. And here we go. All the pressure is on Georgia here to keep this one going. Cairo finds an early miss. Not what they want to see. Not what they want to see at all, but very early on, so it shouldn't affect too much. It'll start to affect more as he finds another break. You can't have too many misses. You don't want to fall behind before you've even gotten to the first key eye, and that's exactly what's happened here. Going to need to be a break from SoCal at some point before too long because Georgia doesn't want to be too far back and there goes another break from Cairo instead. Boy, yeah, this really is do not hope starting for out well. the recovery, but with that accuracy from Cairo, they just look pretty uncomfortable on this map and that's going to put so much pressure on Aline and Rebi. Not only that, but they're going to need two misses most likely out of your cute and headstack. Well, and we saw Oh, it's out. What? It... Okay. Um... Utami, that's an entire pattern. Like, that's a lot of score that he just dropped from missing that many times. Yeah, and all of a sudden, the score is going to be close, and Utami dropped so much accuracy that the score is going to go a little bit back towards Georgia. Oh, Cairo has recovered breaks. enough. Oh, disaster for Georgia. They had the chance for a comeback. Cairo is going to be slightly ahead of Utami, oh. but with two FCs to one, oh, Razor Fruit breaks on the slow section. 
I it hurts. That's just that's just GG. I'm pretty sure you're cute and head side would have to break so. literally right here. That's a really oh. sad way to go out if that's how it's gonna end for Georgia. Let's see. We still have the last key eye section, but it's really about all over but the crying here because there goes Cairo and there goes Georgia's hopes. This was a promising sort of affair for those three maps, but you're cute and headstack much like we saw in the previous match with, uh, was that what, Karyu and, and Opixay or Hanbei and Opixay double was. FCing this map to close out the match 6-3? This kind of strange symmetry of these two matches that they've had very little else in common, uh, but for a break at the end from your cute, very nearly identical results to New York versus Ohio on this map and a identical overall final score. Six to three goes the way of SoCal. It's gonna be disappointing for Georgia to have things end that way, but SoCal certainly put a performance worthy of winning the match on. It is, and after such a strong last three maps, it was so disappointing for Georgia. I think they had about three doors slam on their fingers on that one. <laughs> yeah, it's just, you know, they, they had the opportunity in a few different cases, and it just got thrown away. It's you have to wonder to as, as well, they did actually end up only playing two free mods, which they were theoretically so good on. And so maybe a couple missed picks of from Georgia as well could have changed the outcome of this match. But regardless, Georgia will be eliminated from the tournament. SoCal will be moving on, bringing some sense of normalcy back into the yeah. USC pickums. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if people expected this to be as close as 6-3 after it was 5-0, but you know, that's all it takes was that one more map. And SoCal will move on to face the winner, winner of, of Iowa, Iowa versus New Jersey. New Jersey, which I don't know who expected that to be a matchup that was going to be occurring when you compare it to some of these others, but it is there nonetheless. And SoCal, I think, will be the heavy favorite regardless of which of those teams they play. I think so. I think either team, you wouldn't necessarily expect either of those teams to be particularly better than Georgia. Uh, and so SoCal is certainly going to be the heavy favorite going into that one, but we have seen some big upsets throughout this tournament, so I don't think we can say any match is free. Uh, now, I think the next match will actually be tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, this time, this time that one's correct. Uh, so that's our Friday night block done. Next up is um, an interesting, so, so Carolina versus Texas is the next match to come. And it's being played at the somewhat bizarre time of 16 UTC, that is, noon eastern 9 a.m pacific time in an only usa tournament <laughs> i don't know that yeah. i don't remember the last time we had a match that early in this tournament they don't happen very often it's the only one so far this year um but it's going to be happening anyway so yeah noon noon eastern uh, 11 a.m central time for texas noon for carolina um and then uh we go from there. This weekend is that kind of weird one where you've got all these potential matches, so the schedules get kind of wonky really quickly. Uh, NorCal versus Florida, Massachusetts versus Washington Sunday evening, um, but of course the two potential matches still to be finalized in terms of time, so you'll have to kind of keep an eye out for those. Yeah, and before we uh, move on, I just want to call out the Massachusetts versus Washington <laughs> winner's bracket match on Sunday night. I don't think a single person expected. <laughs> Yeah, uh, that, you know, Massachusetts, maybe with this year's roster, a little surprising to see there. Washington, I don't think anybody would have predicted. I think, you know, you look at the bracket, it was really easy to say, oh, this will just be Ohio versus SoCal, the two versus three seed in that semifinal. And uh, much like March Madness, brackets have been busted in a very exciting sort of way. They certainly have, but I think with that, it is going to be the end of our stream for tonight. Thank you so much, this one guy, for commentating with me tonight. I hope you guys all enjoyed the stream, and have a good one.